Hi, Bill Hurd from Hackaday here. Today we're going to learn what radio controlled tanks, power transistors, power MOSFETs, and helicopters have in common. Why helicopters, you might ask? Well, they're in my blood. I got around them in a cavalry unit in the service, and then I was in a medical battalion in the service. And then later on in life, uh, I worked at a trauma center and we're unloading all the helicopters in South Jersey. So they get, it gets into your blood. But one of the things I learned uh, while I was learning to fly was uh, what we call the height velocity diagram, or, or as commonly known, the dead man's curve. And what that says is you can't just fly at any height at any speed, unless you're being shot at, um, to have a safe area of operation. You need to be high up if you're going slow, that way if the engine gives out you can convert that energy into the blades called auto rotation, or if you're low then you need to be going fast. So again you're going to convert the forward speed into auto rotation and land. So this area where we're allowed to fly is called the safe area operation. Guess what today's video is about? We're going to talk about safe area operation and transistors and MOSFETs and other things. So. Okay, so let's talk about a power transistor for a second. We might be familiar with them. Uh, let's think of it as a switch. If we've got it turned off, there's no power consumption because zero current times whatever voltage, 12 volts let's say, um, there's no power concern. So a, a switch off, great. Let's think of it as a switch turned on. Still, we're, we're very good. It's in our, inside a safe area operation if you want to think about it. But we get into trouble if we get into the middle somewhere between on and off we get, we're in the linear region and uh, we may have left the safe area operation. Why would you have a transistor in the linear area? Well, a linear voltage regulator like an LDO, that's an example, or, or an audio amplifier. Audio amplifiers don't cut on and off, at least there's some, but let's not talk about those. Um, they have to work in the linear region. So that's our safe area operation is understanding the dead man's curve of transistors if you want to think about it, how to keep it from melting down and heating. Okay, here's a safe area operation of both a transistor and a power MOSFET. Uh, what you see here is they look a lot alike. They both share the same parameters for or the same characteristics for off to the left is a little bit of voltage, lots of current. Off to the right is a little bit of current but lots of voltage and we're okay at those two extremes but it's in the middle that we have to watch out for our safe area operation and again there's two kinds of safe area operation there's th temperature or thermal which we talked a little bit about already and there's the power based one which is what we're talking here now you look at the transistor it's got one additional failure mode it's got the secondary breakdown and what that is is that's actually the the physics of the bond wire and the base connection and the collector connection where they get too hot. It's a point heat or a pinpoint heat and actually will break the die and stress the die. And it's a lot like if you put a roll car into a, put a roll cage into a car and you go to use it and all it does is punch holes in the chassis. Uh, that's kind of what's going on though. Okay, real quick, um, I just wanted to, to show this so that you knew uh, that there are time trade-offs. A lot of times you'll see this on the graphs. And here you'll see the from DC steady on in red all the way up to the corner where if you uh, pulsed it at 100 microseconds, you know, now, now you're up around 100 amps instead of down around uh, 2. So I know you got to be asking about now, so what's this have to do with radio controlled tanks other than Bill's kind of infatuated with re remote control tanks? And it's true. I used to crew a uh, tank back in the 1970s called an M60A1. They get in your, uh, they get in your bloodstream too. But I bought this tank in uh, about 30 years ago in Tokyo while there for Commodore Business Machines. And back then, we didn't have switching MOSFETs, and so, you know, I, I will talk about hex FETs and, and how MOSFETs suddenly could handle power, but back then we just didn't have them. So the way the motor speed is controlled is by this little wiper on what is essentially a power resistor with the insulation torn off on one side. So this will swing back and forth choosing areas of speed. Now, it's got a safe area operation. You can get this in the right spot where maybe the motor stall and suddenly you got too much voltage, too much uh, current, and the power being dissipated by this is high. And it's a trade-off. Why would they do that? Well, it works most of the positions, just not all. Um, and so if we look here, there's the hole it melted, um, geez, 15, 20 years ago <laughs> before I put the, uh, 
the switcher in, or before I put the modern device in there. Now, I was going to uh, actually power up the, the power resistor here and show you um, the heating cycle. I thought, that's stupid. Just take my word for it. So, uh, you know, here's how I would have measured it. Uh, like, I've got a fluke uh, adapter and then a thermocouple. It's probably a two dissimilar metal thermocouple. Um, and then you, you all have seen these, I'm sure. Uh, this is just one of those little uh, infrared things where it sends a dot of light to whatever you're measuring. And we all know that's uh, that light's not doing the measuring. That's just a pointing device to tell you, right? So it's not modulating the return light. I thought that at one time. All right, I want to go over just a little bit of math and then we're out of here. Quite, uh, quite simply, what I have is the safe area operating grid. And I'm just showing that if you have 10 amps at 1.1 volt way up here in the corner where it's you know turned on and running, um, that's only about a watt. And down here, same thing. If I take the opposite of it, the reciprocal, uh, 0.1 amp, 10 volts, well, 1 amp, so or 1 watt. I'm sorry. So this shows the on and off are are easy to do, low low power dissipation. Here in the middle, harder to do, higher power dissipation. 5 volts times 5 amps equals 25 watts. Uh, matter of fact, I'll show you how to someday how to combine a switching supply and a linear supply to reduce the load for everybody. Uh, we also have one more devil in the details, so I just wanted to bring that one out, make sure we're all uh, aware of it. And that is, if we do Ohm's law and we end up with P equals I squared R, uh, what that's saying is the current squared times the resistance is the power dissipated in a resistive load. And if I take a common MOSFET, the IRL540, which is a logic level gate, I love that one, uh, it's got an on resistance. When it's turned on, it, it becomes all the way down to 0.08 ohms, which is okay. It's not great, great but it's, it's okay. Well, let's look how well it does. <clears throat> so if we give it 1 amp times 0.08 ohms, we're still at 0.08 watts, because 1 times 1 times 0.08. So as we do that multiplication, we see at 5 amps, 2 watts. Now that little heat sink we were talking about in the last video makes sense. Hey, I can do 5 amps, and then 8 amps and 10 amps. But what happens if we make it be one ohm? Silly little ohm. The difference an ohm makes in the RDS on, the uh, resistance drain source on. If we do the math again, we'll see we have one watt and then 25 watts for the five amps and then 64 and 100. So instead of eight, it's 100. Instead of uh, five, it's 64 watts. So we find that a little bit of resistance gets really hammered because of the I square part of it. That's why your uh, high power lines are uh, high voltage and low current instead of the other way around. And it's also why your dryer at home uh, runs off 220 most of the time. And while I've got you thinking about the R on versus linear, I want to show you just one last little thing here. And that is, uh, I've drawn a CMOS gate. I didn't try and show the P channel, N channel. I'm just showing it logically. Uh, this is an inverter where uh, there's a bubble here and not here, so a D will turn on one of these devices. Uh, the logic level D will turn on one of these devices, turn off the other one, and then when it flips to the other state, they, they trade places. The thinking there is that two of these are not on at the same time. One is on or the other one's on, and so there's very little leakage current. So sitting still, there's very little power draw, especially CMOS. It's, it's, this gate's really insulated, not a lot of uh, current going on. The problem starts when you start os oscillating this or, or uh, making it go high and low. The faster you do that, the more time it spends crossing each other in the linear zone, especially you get some capacitance out here, and that capacitance can be felt on the gate in here. Um, and that quite simply is why the CPU in your uh, computer the faster you run it, the hotter it gets because this, you know, now you're doing it in gigahertz. They're crisscrossing all the time. Whereas if you stopped it dead, it would pull very little current. So you might be wondering about now, why safe area operation? What's that mean? Why are we talking about it? Well, uh, we're going to slide our way into talking about um, power supplies here in the future. A linear supply versus a switch supply. And uh, the linear, something this size, can do a one or two amps, one or two watts. Um, or we can do a switching supply and probably get six uh, amps out of the same footprint here. Now, it's, it's got, you know, it's, there's differences. There's an inductor we have to store the energy in and, and things like that. Uh, but it's pretty cool. That's, we didn't have these when I was coming up, the, the switcher supplies. So with that said, Bill Heard from Hackaday, and uh, keep hacking.